So, welcome to the seventh lecture of uh, optical sensors course. In the last couple of lectures, we discussed the uh, pro propagation of an electromagnetic wave at an interface and there we solved for the Fresnel coefficients. And from there, we saw that when there is the angle of incidence is equal to the Brewster angle, we get uh, total transmission in p polarized light and there is no reflection. We discussed the reasons behind that and we also discussed how to use it for sensing applications. So, that was the case when the wave was traveling from a medium of a smaller refractive index to the medium with larger refractive index, okay, like rarer to denser medium say air to water. Now, we will discuss what happens when the electromagnetic wave travels otherwise to say that it moves from a denser medium to rarer medium say water to air. So, today we are going to discuss what is called total internal reflection and we will try to use them for sensing applications. But before we move I want to say that wh what we derived was R p is equal to n 1 cos theta 2 minus n 2 cos theta 1 divided by n 1 cos theta 2 plus n 2 cos theta 1. That is what we derived and we saw that R p was equal to 0 when n 1 cos theta 2 was equal to n 2 cos theta 1 and that was that came to the conclusion that tan theta b that was the Brewster angle that was n 2 by n 1. So, we we, uh, we reached arrived until there and now we see that sometimes so r p can be greater than 0 or r p can be smaller than 0. What it means? See if it is greater than 0 then it means that the electric field the phase has not changed. When it is smaller than 0 that means the direction of the electric field has changed. So, if my wave was incident at at angle theta with electric field pointing in this direction this was E i. So, in the reflected wave if it is in the same direction like this then this case is valid. If R p is smaller than 0 that means, so this is case first and the second case when it is smaller than 0 you will have electric field vector here. So, that is the meaning I mean the electric field changes its direction when you have R p less than 0. What it physically means? Uh, to, to understand it let us say that theta is equal to 0. So, R p will be equal to n 1 cos theta 2 sorry it will be n 1 minus n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 that theta is equal to 0. If n 1 is greater than n 2 then R p will be equal to greater than 0. If n 1 is less than n 2, R p will be less than 0. It means that the electric field changes its direction when it is moving from a medium of refract a smaller refractive index to a medium of larger refractive index. If the electromagnetic wave is moving from a medium of high refractive index to low refractive index, then there is R p is greater than 0 and there is no change in the sign of the electric field. So, what happens to the electromagnetic wave? So, if you have an electromagnetic wave E is equal to E 0 e to power I phi, this if E so, if it is E i and if E, if e r is 
so say minus of something minus of a function of e i why is this minus coming because phi is equal to pi so it was it is like this so this is an interface wave is going in this direction moving here so the reflected ones for r is smaller than 0 what you have is that if the electric field is in this direction the reflected one will be having in in the other direction it is like this. So, if it is E i you have E r. So, this phase difference of phi pi is happening e to power i phi e to power i phi pi is equal to minus 1. If it is moving in the other way then it will be positive. So, we know until here now let us see what happens when we have a medium of high reflective index and the wave moves to a medium of low reflective index. So, let us say that uh, we have an interface where a wave incident at angle theta 1 gets refracted at uh, angle theta 2 and it has dielectric and um, uh, dielectric constant epsilon 1 mu 1 and epsilon 2 mu 2. So, we see here in this particular picture that uh, this an high index material and this is a low index material and what happens when the light source is here a ray normal to the surface will not bend. So, it will go into the medium second medium that is at angle theta is equal to 0 to the interface. Now, if it goes at a some angle say theta 1 then what happens that a, a part of it will get bent I mean get reflected into the same medium and a small part will go into the other medium that is reflection and refraction both happening there. Now, if you keep on increasing the angles say from theta 1 to theta 2 what happens is uh, that the ray bends more to uh, uh, away from the normal. So, it when you, you start increasing the angle of incidence the ray refracted into the other medium this angle gets larger. So, it is moving away from the normal. There arrives a particular condition of theta c a critical angle that is called a critical angle when for the, the angle for this particular angle of incidence all the ray which is all the wave which is incident at this interface will have an angle of 90 degree in refraction. So, but it will be traveling along the interface into the second medium not in the first medium it will be traveling into the second medium. When you in further increase the angle of incidence greater than theta c then it comes back to the same medium this is called total internal reflection or TIR. So, the critical angle is given by. So, if you want to calculate critical angle. So, we know that uh, the formula was n 1 sin theta 1 was equal to n 2 sin theta 2 and when uh, for theta 2 is equal to 90 degree theta 1 is equal to theta c. So, what we get is n 1 sin theta c is equal to n 2 and sin theta c is equal to n 2 by n 1. This is the condition for critical angle. So, if theta is greater than theta c this implies that there will be T i r total internal reflection we will see what happens to that. So, so we arrive to this condition when we have critical angle and for theta greater than theta c the reflection angle is imaginary. How? Let us try to uh, see it. So, we arrived here. So, let us put n 1 sin theta 1 greater than theta c this implies that n 1 sin theta 2 is equal to n 1 by n 2 sin theta 1 greater than 1 because this should be larger than 1. This implies that no 
here do not have n 1 because n 2 is here. So, cos theta 2 will be under root 1 minus sin square theta 2 that is equal to plus minus i sin square theta 2 minus 1. So, in this case when so for n 1 sin theta 1 was n 2 sin 90 when theta 1 was equal to theta c sin 90. So, sin 90 is 1. So, if I write n 1 by n 2 sin theta 1 that is equal to sin theta 2. So, it was 90 for 90 it was 1 for angles more than 90 means if theta 2 is larger then it has to be larger. If it has to be larger then it is equal to 1 greater than 1, but we know that the value of sin theta cannot be greater than 1, but in this case it is it seems that theta 2 is imaginary. So, that is what we arrive here. So, you have theta 2 this value which is has imaginary value. So, what happens to the electric field let us try to see. So, this happened to the this happened to the angle. So, the reflection coefficient R p was equal to n 1 cos theta 2 minus n 2 cos theta 1 divided by n 1 cos theta 2 plus n 2 cos theta 1. Let us try to see what happens to each of this. So, R becomes equal to n 1 into plus minus i sin square theta 2 minus 1 minus n 2 cos theta 1 divided by n 1 into plus minus i under root sin square theta 2 minus 1 minus plus n 2 cos theta 1. Then this term is complex reflection coefficient is complex what it means we will come to that. Let us try to see what happens to the transmitted field E t if you remember was E t 0 e 2 power i omega t minus k 2 cos theta 2 into x minus k 2 sin theta 2 into z. This was our electric field you put the value of cos theta 2 you will have e t 0 e 2 power i you can take k k 2 both are k 2. So, I can take k 2 common we will have plus minus i under root sin square theta 2 minus 1 into x. So, this is what we get into into e to power i we can separate it i omega t minus k 2 z k 2 sin theta 2 into z. So, you have two components since this has plus minus i I separated it out and now you have one term which is similar to the previous case and then you have different term. Let us simplify it further e to power i t 0 e to power plus minus i that is minus 1. So, it will be minus plus k under root sin square theta 2 minus 1 into x into this thing e to power i omega t minus k 2 sin theta 2 into z. Out of these two signs, uh, it can have either positive sign or negative sign. What it means? Positive sign means that the electric field is growing exponentially, that the electric field grows exponentially.
which means this is not feasible this is not feasible why because the electric field you incident it can happen only in the grain medium it's a simple medium and you don't have uh, you do not have a medium where the electric field is growing exponentially like that. So, it is it is not feasible. So, what is feasible? The negative sign. This means the E field decays exponentially. So, there are two conditions one like it can grow or it can decay, but this is not feasible. So, we will not take this con con uh, into consideration, we take this con into consideration. So, what we get is E t 0 is equal to E t E t is equal to E t 0 e to power minus k 2 under root sin square theta 2 minus 1 into x e to power i omega t minus k 2 sin theta 2 into z. So, we get this solution. If you remember the our configuration was like this, here it was x and this was z and what we see is that now we have a wave which is a plane wave. So, you have a plane wave travelling in the z direction who has an amplitude this is amplitude which is dec decaying exponentially. So, it means that we have a wave which travels like this and its amplitude decays. So, its amplitude if you plot the amplitude with x the electric field E it decays exponentially. So, here you will have E t 0 value and then it starts decaying. So, if x is equal to 1 upon k 2 sin square theta 2 minus 1, then E t is equal to E t 0 by E. Then x is called penetration depth that we represent at d or lambda. So, we get a wave that is called evanescent wave. So, we get a wave which is travelling along the interface and when it travels along the interface, its amplitude decays exponentially along the interf uh, in th into the media and the penetration depth is given by this relation. So, we will arri arrive to this relation. Uh, we arrived here that to the value of x where the amplitude decays to 1 by e is called penetration depth and this is given by d is equal to 1 upon k 2 under root sin square theta 2 minus 1. Let us try to solve it further. So, you have k 2 is equal to 2 pi n by lambda. So, you will have 1 lambda 0 upon 2 pi n 2 sin square theta 2 minus 1 you take in n 2 inside you will have lambda 0 2 pi n 2 square sin square theta 2 minus 1. Now, you know that we do not know what is theta 2. 
but we know because if the wave is going like this at theta 1 and we want to know the penetration depth, we do not care what is theta 2. So, what we do is that n 1 sin theta 1 is equal to n 2 sin theta 2, we substitute here. So, you get what you get lambda 0, here you have n 2 square. So, you have get 2 pi under root n 1 square sin square theta 1 minus n 2 square. So, this is penetration depth, this is called penetration depth, penetration depth. You see here that d is proportional to lambda 0, that is first thing. Second thing is d is inversely proportional to d is inversely proportional to theta. So, there are two important implications of this relation. One is that d is proportional to lambda 0, what it means? It means that the penetration depth will increase for light of larger wavelengths. So, if you have so, if you have the penetration depth is like this and if you take a red one which has larger wavelength, the penetration depth will be penetration depth will be larger for the same angle of incidence. So, if you had so, if it is d so, if it was d 1 for green one d 2 will be for red one. So, for red one it will be larger that means, you can penetrate more and more into the medium when you increase the wavelength. This can also happen with theta. So, for a smaller value of theta when you are very close to the critical angle, you will have large penetration depth close to infinite. As you increase the theta from critical angle to 90 degrees, it will start decreasing, it will slowly. Okay. So, since we have arrived here, now let us see what we can do with it. Also, the Fresnel equations at the total internal reflection change. So, you can always calculate what is R p that we did already and you can also see what happens to R s that is the s polarized light. We can also see what happens to the phase of the wave when it uh, how it changes. So, these are the relations you should derive at home that is the homework for you. Let us see what happens. So, if you plot it, the reflection coefficient with an in increase in angle of incidence. So, you, you are keep on increasing the angle of incidence, what happens? So, in total, so we saw that for R s, there was no dip, that there was no Brister angle, and where we arrive to p polarized light we see that there is a dip and that is due to Brewster angle and we keep on increasing the angle of incidence, then there arises a condition that is called total internal reflection, a critical angle. So, this is the critical angle for this configuration when n 1 is equal to 2 and n 2 is equal to 1 and after the critical angle, there is no light. So, there is 100 percent reflection, so there is no transmission, so it is like this. So, you get it like this 100 percent. So, the reflection becomes maximum, the transmission becomes 0. So, this, this is the region where which you call the region of total internal reflection. So, you can see for example, in this image that when the light is falling on this, this is because of total internal reflection from this is suppose a glass and this is air and you can see that uh, the change it all gets reflected for angles larger than the critical angle. It can also be used as mirrors. So, all the uh, so you know this interface is again this is glass and this is air and you can see that if it comes 90 degrees, it can have a phase change of 180 degrees. In water streams also light gets 
trapped because of total internal reflection. So, this is a stream of water and then you have air surrounding this water and a laser light is incident from the back side and it rather penetrating like this, it gets bent again and again and again and again. So, this is called total internal reflection or attenuated total reflection. Why attenuated? I will come to that. It can also be used in optical fibers. So, an optical fiber is basically a, a cylinder of glass which is surrounded by another glass which has a refractive index slightly smaller than the refractive index of the core glass. So, for example, so this is a core and then its surrounding it is a cladding and the refractive index of the core is slightly larger than the refractive index of the cladding and one can see that if a, ray, a rays again which have ang angle larger than the critical angle because of this slight change in the refractive index from higher to lower they get total internally reflected. All the rays other than this uh, are, uh, are uh, just radiated out. So, these are called radiation modes of the fiber while those which get guided into it is called guided modes of the optical fiber. So, light can travel through an optical fiber because of this basic principle of total internal reflection. You can see a bundle of uh, optical fiber which can send light from here to remote places and, and it can also be bent. So, that is a very beautiful uh, use of optical fibers in uh, communication these days. We can also make planar waveguides where uh, because of the total internal reflection. So, suppose it is a waveguide where you have n 1 and n 2, uh, n 2 is greater than n 1. So, for critical uh, uh, for angles larger than the critical angle you can guide the light in it and then it will have an even sent field which is traveling and here you will have a mode while here you will have a field which is decaying exponentially because of the even sent wave. So, that is for uh, the present class lecture. Uh, we will see how to use it for sensing in the next lecture. Thank you.